Hello everyone, this is Pre-Cal Lecture 4.9a. I'm going to split 4.9 into two lectures. I normally would do it in one lecture, but I've got some, uh, I've just decided to split it into two uh, on the videos. Um, so you will need your notes, um, 4.9 notes. We're only, we're going to do the front page and then we're going to go through 4.9.2 and stop in the middle of page two. Okay, so when working with equations with logarithmic expressions, you can use the fact that a logarithm is an exponent to untangle the log pieces and simplify the equation. So let's do our first example. So first I'm going to work this problem the long way and then show you a nice shortcut trick. So we have e to the natural log of x minus 1 is equal to 4. We want to solve for x. Okay, so first of all, we could use the properties of logs by, let's take the, anytime e is involved, you want to use natural log. So let's take the natural log of both sides. So we've got the natural log of e to the natural log of x minus 1 is equal to the natural log of 4. All right, so now I can bring that natural log of x minus 1 in front as a coefficient. Natural log of x minus 1 times the natural log of e is equal to the natural log of 4. Now natural log of e is just equal to 1 that we talked about that on in a different lecture how that works. So that's just 1 so then we can say natural log of x minus 1 equals natural log of 4. So let's bring these logs together on the same side. So we'd have the natural log of x minus 1 minus the natural log of 4 is equal to 0. Now let's use the properties of logs to make a single log unit. Since it's minus, I've got division. So x minus 1 over 4 equals 0. Now natural log is log base e. Let's convert to an exponential If I do that, I have e to the 0 is equal to x minus 1 over 4. What is e to the 0? It's 1. If we multiply both sides by 4, I have 4 is equal to x minus 1. And I'll bet you can solve that without a calculator. x is equal to 5. All right, and we could plug that in, plug 5 in, and see that it's not extraneous, and it checks. However, I'm going to leave all this work on here. I want to show you a shortcut. If you can just remember this, e to the natural log of a is equal to a. What happens is the e and the natural log cancel each other out. Okay? So that is a formula worth remembering. E to the natural log of a, I'm sorry, that's this, I gotta get some new pins. E to the natural log of a is equal to a. All right, so what you're, whatever you're taking the natural log in, that's equal to that. So we have a similar situation here. We have e to the natural log of x minus one is equal to four. Well, e to the natural of x, natural log of x minus 1 is just x minus 1. These two cancel each other out. So I have x minus 1 is equal to 4, so x equals 5. So if you can remember this formula, it will save you all this work. I did want to show you how to do it the long way. Okay, pause the video if you need to. Okay, got our 
ourselves a nice clean board here. Let's work on the next two examples. So we've got a nested log. So we'll try to write a little bigger on these shorter problems so we don't have so much bleeding with this marker. Okay, we have log base 10 of the log base 10 of x is equal to 1. A nested log. Well, this is just going to take, this isn't hard, it's just going to take two iterations. So first we want to convert to an exponential. Well, log base 10, that's like saying 10 to the first power is equal to log of x. Well, what's 10 to the first power? It's 10. Now I've got to do it again. 10 to the 10th, because that's 10 right there. It's base 10, even though I'm not writing it. Log base 10, 10 to the 10th is equal to x. Well, that's the answer. 10 to the 10th is a really big number, so write it as 10 to the 10th. You just got to untangle the nest. All right, let's get one more. Okay, we've got the natural log of e to the 3x is equal to 6. Well, let's use the properties of logs. Bring that 3x out front of the natural log. So we've got 3x natural log of e is equal to 6. What's the natural log of e? It's 1. This is just a 1. So 3x equals 6, x equals 2. Could you check it? Could you check it? Could you check it? Yeah, put a 2 in right there. Put it in your calculator. It'll check. That is going to equal to 6. Natural log of e to the 6 is equal to 6. Beautiful. All right, pause if you need to. And we'll finish this nice short little lecture out. Okay. Let's turn over your notes, and we're going back to our, our lovely formula, the compound interest formula. We're going to use logarithms. We've solved for f before. We've solved for p before. We've solved for the interest rate. We haven't solved for time yet. Finally, we can use logarithms to solve for time. Okay, so I'm going to write our equation up here in the corner. Remember, M, number of compoundings per year, T is time in years, R is rate, future value, present value. Okay, let's go through this one problem and solve for time. So Melvin wants to buy a $30,000 car, only has $27,000. Maybe he should just negotiate the $30,000 down to $27,000, but I guess he couldn't do that. If he invests his money in a 6% account compounded quarterly, when will he have enough money to buy the car? Right, when? Well, we're solving for time. So let's fill out the future value. Future value is 30,000. The current or present value, how much does he have now? 27,000. And then we've got one plus, interest rate is 6%, so that's 0 0.06, compounded quarterly. How many times a year is that? Four. Then to the four times t. All right, four t. M t. Solving for t. Well, what we want to do is bring that twenty-seven thousand underneath the thirty thousand. One plus point oh six over over four. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and. Put that as a decimal. So if you put 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 in your calculator, it's 1.015. So you want to take it out at least three decimal places to the 4t. 
All right, 30,000 over 27,000 is 1.111. Don't round too much. That one goes forever, but three decimal places should be enough. It is equal to 1.015 to the 4t. Now what I'm going to do, you can take the log base 10 or natural log of both sides. We'll go, we've been doing natural log a bit lately, so let's do the log base 10. So take log both sides. All right, so we've got the log of 1.111 is equal to log of 1.015 to the 4t. Well, log of 1.111 is just a number. Put it in your calculator. If you put that in your calculator, it's 0 0.04575. Let's take it out several places. Well, what can I do with that 4t? And I know it's a blob now, but it's a 4t. Bring it out front. All right, log of 1.015, that's just a number. So I've got 0 0.04575 is equal to 4t. If you put that in your calculator, it's going to be 0 0.00647. So all I need to do to get t is divide 0 0.04. 575, bring the 4 and the point 0, 0, 0647 underneath. Okay, we're going to bring those two underneath and then just put it in our calculator. And that is 1.77 years. All right, really cool. Finally, we can solve for time in the compound interest formula just by using logs. You could have used the natural log. You would have got the same final answer. However, these numbers would have been different. Okay, um, the uh, Once you took that 0 0.04575 would have been a different number and the uh, log of natural log of 1.015 would have been a different number than this. But it would have worked out after you did the algebra to 1.77 years. So the homework. is worksheet 4.9, you can do one through six. All right, that's great. And our next lecture is going to be super short. We'll work on that homework and we'll talk to you next time.